Tummy upset sucks. Any sort of abdominal symptom during a triathlon is rubbish, and it can make you go from having a brilliant race to a crappy race in an instant. In this video, we're gonna delve into this in more detail and talk about the different causes of abdominal symptoms, whether that's bloating, stitches, diarrhea, or cramps, and how you can improve them so that you can finish a triathlon without any of it. So what's up, nutrition nerds? If you're new here, then hey, my name's James, and I'm a sport nutritionist and also race triathlons. I've done my fair share of triathlons over the years, and I've had my fair share of abdominal symptoms too. Thankfully, I've got to the point where this is no longer a problem and I can finish a triathlon strongly. So let's try to shed some light on this for you so that you can finish a triathlon symptom-free too. We're gonna go through this like I would as an athlete consultation so that you can go through all of these points and see where you may be able to make improvements. When we're considering any sort of stomach upset during a triathlon, we need to start with what you've eaten in the days before your race, as well as your race day breakfast. This is because what you've eaten can have a significant impact on how your tummy feels during a race and could definitely be the cause of symptoms. And we talk about what we've eaten in the days before a race because that's how long it takes for food to transition through your gut and essentially to poo it out. The basic premise here is that the more food or substance you have in your gut, the more likely you are to have symptoms. And there are some foods which people eat before a triathlon which are really bad for this. If you've ever watched any of my videos on race day breakfasts or carb loading, you'll know that I suggest low fiber, low fat and low to medium protein before your race. And that's because these nutrients are hard to digest. They usually take longer to exit your stomach and then longer to break down in your gut. And some foods like fiber can't actually be digested properly. Now, these are some foods which I commonly see people eat in the days before a race or in their race day breakfast, and these are much more likely to cause difficulty. So the way to reduce this risk factor for tummy upset is to eat that low fiber, low fat, and low protein diet in the 48 hours or so before your race, as well as in your race day breakfast. I have created a carb loading plan, which you can download for free, and I've put the link in the description of this video as well as the comment section, and basically that'll give you a good idea of what sort of foods you might want to eat in the days before a triathlon. Obviously, everyone is individual, and you might be able to tolerate more or less of certain foods but it just gives you a good idea and you can individualize it to suit your own needs. So now let's talk about the things that could happen during a race, which could affect your tummy and increase the risk of abdominal symptoms. And broadly, I split these into two main categories, which are stress and nutrition. Now these two are linked, but it's important to separate them out. And let's start by talking about the whole stress side of things so that then you can then apply it to your nutrition afterwards. When I talk about stress here, I'm talking about the overall stress that your body is under and what can change that. So as well as you just feeling stressed or anxious, I'm also talking about climate, temperature, and how hard you're working during your race. The long and short of this here is that if your body is under more stress, then it won't be able to absorb as much nutrition as if it were less stressed. So as a practical example, if the day of your race ends up being far hotter than you'd expected, or you go way harder on the bike than you meant to, that accounts for more stress in your body. More stress means less blood flow available to your abdominal organs, which means that you'll absorb less nutrition, so there is a higher likelihood of symptoms because you have that unabsorbed nutrition bouncing around in your gut. So you have to factor these things in. Now, of course, you can't change the actual weather on the day of your race, but you can look in advance and consider whether you need to change your nutrition plan because of it. So for example, if it is gonna be far hotter than you had anticipated or practiced in, then you could consider scaling your carbohydrate intake a little bit to give yourself a bit more buffer for that heat. The other option, and this links to another big point, is to reduce your pace or power. This might be needed if it's hotter to allow you to race at the same intensity as you've practiced at in cooler conditions and account for that extra heat stress. This sort of thing makes a massive difference, but it's really common for people to focus on something like power and say, no, I'm not dropping my watts. 
but you might actually be far better off by doing that. And finally, to round out the stress side of things, you need to make sure that you do practice your nutrition at your intended race power or effort. You need to make sure that you can actually absorb your nutrition at that sort of pace. And it also gives a benchmark for everything that we've just talked about. Because if you go over that pace or power target, then not only do you risk blowing up early into your race, you also increase the risk of abdominal symptoms from it. So let's say that you've got your pace and your power right and the weather was as expected. What else could contribute to tummy upset during your race? There are three main areas of nutrition during your race which we need to go into. And that's the amount of carbohydrates, the type of carbohydrates, and the type of carbohydrates. Now, bear with me here. So firstly, the amount of carbohydrates that you take in during a race can significantly increase the likelihood of GI symptoms. By the way, we've gone into this in lots of detail in other videos, so I'm not really going to here, but carbohydrates are the thing that most triathletes should be focusing on because they are the king of nutrients for sporting performance. So that's why we're talking about them now. Now, these are the guidelines for carbohydrate intake during a triathlon. And as you can see, the longer the race is, the more carbohydrates you should aim to consume. However, whilst these are the numbers that you can go off, it's not uncommon for triathletes not to actually be able to consume this much carbohydrate. Being able to absorb lots of carbohydrates from your gut is a skill, and there's a training element to it, as well as probably a genetic one too. If you're trying for a really high carbohydrate intake, but you can't actually tolerate it, all that happens is that it just sits in your gut and increases the risk of tummy upset. So you might actually need to reduce that number a bit. And this is where training is so important because you can practice it, see how well you can tolerate it, and also try to improve it. The other thing in this how much carb bracket is to check that you're taking your chosen sport nutrition product as per the packet instructions. Are you, for example, concentrating your drink because you don't actually want that much fluid, but you want a higher carb intake? Or are you taking gels on their own when they should be consumed with water? By taking in too much carbohydrate in one go at a more concentrated amount, you might actually be contributing to tummy upset. Now, what happens here is because the osmolarity or the concentration of your drink or solution is so high, your gut notices this and it pulls water into your intestines to help to balance that out. This can be the cause of that classic sloshy sensation in your gut even if you didn't drink that much water in the first place. So you want to avoid this. So the way to counter all of this is to make sure that you are taking your nutrition as per the packet instructions and not concentrating it more than it should be. Now, the type of carbohydrate that you use will make a difference too. My rule of thumb is that if you're aiming to consume more than 40 grams of carbohydrates per hour, then you should be using a combination of glucose and fructose. You might also see glucose as maltodextrin and it is essentially the same thing. We know from the research that when you combine these two things together, so glucose and fructose, then you actually increase the amount of carbohydrates that you can absorb and then use for energy. So you get the added benefit of performing better and reducing the likelihood of GI symptoms. So for example, if you want to consume 80 grams of carbohydrates per hour, but you use a product that only contains glucose, you're at a far higher risk of tummy upset compared to if you used a product that contained glucose and fructose. The current research suggests that probably a 1 to 0.8 ratio of glucose or maltodextrin to fructose is ideal, but you'll also see a lot of products using a 2 to 1 ratio, and I think for most people that probably is fine. Most sport nutrition companies will put this sort of information on the packet instructions so that you can actually clearly view this for yourself. Finally, and the second part of what type of carbohydrates is, are you using complex or simple sugars or fast or slow carbohydrates? Generally, when it comes to racing, you want to be using simple, fast acting carbohydrates. From working with athletes and examining the current research, the use of complex carbohydrates during racing is much more likely to cause tummy upset. Anything that contains glucose or maltodextrin and fructose would be a fast acting carbohydrate. And anything that contains isomultulose or starch or is branded as a slow release carb is probably one to stay away from. 
there's really no benefit when it comes to racing in terms of performance and you just increase the risk of those GI symptoms so better to avoid it. So now let's move on to some other potential causes of tummy upset during a race and how you might be able to improve them. Lots of triathletes struggle with the swim leg, myself included. As someone who only learned front crawl as an adult, it's always been a weakness of mine. I've had some races where I have swallowed so much water and air that I've come out feeling bloated and uncomfortable and I've wondered how there is still water left in the lake. I've also had the same after swim sessions in the pool and it's one of the ways that I know that my technique was crap that day. Anyway, this can definitely be the cause of GI upset and the question is, how do we get around this? Well, from a nutrition point of view, I would say there are three things that you can do. Firstly, if it's a longer race, then you could just delay taking on your nutrition a little bit whilst you get comfortable. You burp and you fart and you just make some room. This will just give you a chance to settle down before you start adding some nutrition or water. The other thing you could do if you're a weaker swimmer is to reduce the amount of fluid you take in during the first hour, for example, and instead just use chews or gels for your nutrition. Essentially, you're just reducing the amount of liquid that's already probably in your tummy and giving it some time to settle. Now, the final thing that you could do, and this might not be a popular one, is to improve your swimming. Now, hear me out. It's really common for triathletes to say that they just want to survive the swim and they're much stronger on the run or on the bike so they can go harder there. Now, most people have a favorite discipline and of course, that's fair enough. But if your swimming is actually making your race harder overall and reducing the amount of nutrition you can take on and actually causing tummy upset, then it makes sense to work on that. So spend a bit more time on your swimming and work on it because actually you're not just improving the swim leg, but you're improving your whole race. Now, as well as focusing on your swimming, another area to target might be your core strength and stability. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know exactly how much difference this makes, but if you don't actually already work on these things, then I really think that you should. Because I wonder if muscular weakness through the torso can contribute to tummy upset. And to me, it makes sense because it is such a delicate area. If you're really fatigued and your core and your posture has gone to crap, then you're just putting more stress through your abdomen and this definitely could contribute to various aches and pains. And as your intestines are so sensitive and full of nerves, then I do think that this might contribute to abdominal symptoms during a race. So my suggestion would be to make sure that you do some sort of core strength and training two to three times a week. And while I don't know for sure whether it really would help with the gastro symptom side of things, we know that it definitely helps with overall performance and reducing the risk of injury. So I think it's a winner all around. So hopefully what we've been through today has been useful for you. Now, I would love to know what's the one thing which you think that you could work on with your race nutrition. Let me know in the comments what you think it is. So please do give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already, and check out some of these videos because I think you'll find them useful. Have fun with your racing.